All right, Matt Gannon, Jers, we are back. It's the Valero Texas Open, and that always means we are one week away from the Masters. But before we get into the Valero Texas Open, before we get into anything about the Masters, it's victory lap time because uh, it was a good week in Houston. Matt, a winner on Steven Yeager. Scotty didn't win. Both things Scotty came true win. for us. You found the winner on the pod last week in real time. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Yeah, Yeggs really did. It really did feel good because it was a long time coming of heartbreak, a lot of close calls as we've talked about in the past. But yeah, Yeggs got it done, showed a lot of guts. He didn't do anything. He, I Honestly, he played so absolutely average yesterday, I would say. like He didn't do anything bad. Didn't do anything amazing, but he did enough to get the job done. And it almost wasn't enough. A five foot put away, honestly, a few inches away, a few millimeters away from dropping and probably losing in a playoff. So, uh, but uh, prayers were answered. Yeggs got it done. Great, great win for sure. I think Yeggs winning a tournament where he plays completely average is the perfect way for Yeggs to win a tournament because he's been playing right. perfectly average now for like a year right. where he's like always slightly above average and everything. So uh, a less than like a not spike winning performance where he just plays steady and uh, gets the job done. Scotty does not win. We'll talk uh, Houston in. Uh, let's just get into Houston actually right now. But before we do that, got to do it every week. Like and subscribe. Uh, it's great. Uh, to get the pod out there in front of more people really appreciate everybody who tunes in especially on weeks like this weeks like last week you know not the most popular weeks but the numbers uh still looking pretty good for the pod so that's exciting as we get into more of the season uh the heart of the season here coming up with all the majors kicking off soon enough i was watching uh man city versus arsenal uh soccer or football yesterday and they were advertising all the uh, majors on the like billboards that go around the side really, of the really? soccer field so yeah i think it was like sky sports so major season people are excited uh man city's excited that's a good sign but stevie Yates gets the job done i didn't watch a lot of saturday i watched probably the back nine stretch on sunday I had my eyes on the hoops as i as i know you did as well but very sweaty uh, win. There's a lot of guys in the mix there. How did it feel coming yeah. down the stretch with uh, a Yikes take? I think you had Akshay as well. I, I had Billy Ho. I think actually Billy Ho, he was very close to winning that tournament. He made a crazy run in the final round. But uh, there were so many guys live. Like even the, the, the chasers like Billy Ho that could have posted a number. Even Tone wasn't really in it at, and after he blew up on Saturday. But he missed a two-footer to tie the lead, which would he wouldn't have known would have gotten to a playoff, but would have. Uh, yeah, it was definitely sweaty. I was watching all of Saturday, all of Sunday, standing in my living room. Did not sit. Just those kind of sweats are just you can't sit down. And yeah, it was definitely sweating every single shot, every single putt. Yeah, he's made so many clutch par saves, miraculous par saves, but. That needed to be done to take down and slay the dragon, like I tweeted, and then Yeg said in his presser, which was hilarious. So he got he lit, it was just one of the sweatiest outrights I think I've ever hit because he had to make two par putts. One from was off the green, and they were both outside of 15 feet that were just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it went in. I was like, Yegs, let's go. So yeah, it was a sweat for sure. He, uh... what was I gonna say? I was the. Did you feel at any point, because I said this, or we both said this on the pod last week, and I, I was confident of it the entire week. I was confident even when Scotty stood over that final putt. I did not believe Scotty was going to win, and there really was not a single moment, even with how close he was in a contention, where I felt legitimately like he was going to win. And yeah. you had Yeggs. Did was that like? Did you were how scared of Scotty were you, or were you just more scared of mm. how many guys were in the mix in general? Because to me, that was the bigger yeah. threat to to Yex. Honestly, more that there were so many guys in the mix. Like anyone could have won. So many guys fucked up, and we just, I just avoided so many bullets. Like Dietrich missed three eight foot putts on the back nine. Scotty played probably as bad as Scotty could have played. He hit some really wayward shots. I'm not really sure how you were watching. He missed a lot of greens from places that he would never miss greens from and caused him to have really tough up and downs. Half of them, he did not get up and down. And he also missed a ton of putts, which he hasn't, he hadn't missed those five to 10 foot putts for now three weeks going back to API, like at least at a consistent rate, which before he was missing them all the time. So the perfect storm just happened. I was not scared of Scotty until Jaeger when, when Scotty missed that par putt, I mean that Eagle putt on 16, I was like, all right, that's huge. But then when Jaeger parred, 17 
I was like, all right, Scotty's not going to get this up and down because he was short-sided on the drive of a par 4 17th. And then once he didn't get that up and down, I was like, all right, we avoided another bullet. Scotty is just going to stuff this, and I could feel it coming. This is the last bullet we have to avoid. And I thought at that point he really was going to sink it and then play off I didn't think was a good sign for me, but we we avoided it. So I definitely thought Scotty had it down the stretch. Pretty much, I don't think a single guy birdied 17. It was like every single guy missed that about, everybody had like a five to 15 foot putt, depending on like who it was. And even, I mean, that started because I was I was watching the basketball on the main TV. I don't got the six set up like you do with multiple TVs. And I was flipping back and forth. And then I had Billy Ho was on the stream. So I just had that on my computer. And like mm-hmm. even Billy Ho got to 17 at minus 10. And he had like an eight foot putt to get yeah, to 11. That, right? And then pretty much every mm-hmm. guy from that point forward missed. Toasty didn't birdie. Dietrich didn't birdie. Scotty I was scared didn't of Toasty, birdie. Like, truthfully. If anyone had birdied uh, 17, they would have been in the playoff because there were so many guys who finished at 11. Um Let's just go down the board here. And to your point on Scotty, he gained putting for the week, like ever so slightly, like slightly positive. And usually when Scotty's positive, he's going to win or he's going to be right there to win, which obviously was this week. But I think that was the key that we talked about going into the week and why this wasn't necessarily the perfect course for Scotty and why he was probably more likely to win the players than this tournament because he did tee to green Scotty type of stuff. And usually when he does that, anything positive is enough to win. But here wasn't quite enough. The other guy who gained infinity t to green almost a whole stroke better than the field was big tone uh he got out of here big lead going into the weekend On falters the weekend. down the stretch but tone just continues he had that one off week uh at uh, valspar when the t to green wasn't good but just unbelievable t to green play from big Tone. literally do anything different on the greens anything yeah, anything different. It's and like you said it. We saw you saw him left hand low out uh, Tuesday or Monday of the players. He hasn't been doing that or or new putter. I forget what you said, but either way, he hasn't been doing anything different, and it just continues to bite him. He needed to make one more putt to potentially win the golf tournament, and he had infinity great looks from Saturday and Sunday. I mean, I you could throw out Saturday. He had a big lead. 90% of golfers are going to play bad golf with a big lead on the weekend. That's whatever. Cool mug, by the way. That was just did not expect that little mug. Thank but you. yeah, Tona, just switch it up. Just do something different because he knows he has the elite tee to green game. And it got even better with that new driver shaft. Uh, drove the hell out of the ball. So, Tone, man, just it's, it's, it's obvious. Just do something different. Yeah, it's insane. Like, I literally watched him on Tuesday, I think, because that was the, you weren't there yet. And he was putting left hand low. He had a longer uh, shafted putter. So like it sat nicely in his hand and he was putting really, really well. And it looks smooth. And then he comes out there uh, first day of the tournament. He's putting normally. He's putts the same way at Valspar. And here it's like, try something different. We just saw it with Scotty. He switched to the mallet. Obviously he didn't put great last week, but it, it works like there's no, how could Finau putt worse trying anything? He it, it, To me, it would be seemingly impossible. And it took Scotty so long to just try something new. And it's, is it an ego thing? It might just be because they don't want to switch their style. And Scotty switched it up, wins immediately. And I thought like, Tone was going to switch with the driver shaft, but you got, it's just comical how bad he is with the putter. Anything. I'm fully of the belief that if you're a bad putter, you should be trying something different every week. Like, right. If you're that bad, I mean, if you're like kind of toeing the line of like good or bad, like, you no, know, stick with something and improve it. If you're losing a stroke per round putting in multiple Every tournaments time. over a stretch, like, what, it up. how could you do worse? You and think? he's done that before in his career, yeah. too. Like, he's went back to stuff. He switched around and like he's gotten through things. It's time, Tone. And, and I, I wish we had boots at Augusta to see. I wouldn't be as annoyed if I didn't see with my own eyes that he was going left hand low in practice and it was working like if i didn't know that right. i'd be like okay whatever but like it's frustrating to know that he was doing that and it still works out and bef- i don't want to go too far down the board i feel like we didn't give yeggs his full his full due for the victory he's been building to this moment he's been bombing it off the tee he's been excellent tee to green what to you this was finally the first tournament he gained five point no six point four on the greens which is i mean far and away yeah, uh, his best putting performance on the PGA Tour back to at least 2021. What it, it's the it was a bomber course. He's become a bomber player. What do you think the future holds for Stevie? Yeah, is he a guy who maybe wins one tournament a year? Do you think he does more things this year? Is he a major contender? Like he's been playing great. He's looking good on these long courses. Tory, we talked mm-hmm. about the comps last week, Mexico, Tory. There's going to be longer courses coming on the rest of the year. 
what do you what do you make of you actually I don't want to say he's gonna like win once a year but I just love how confident he looks on the golf course whether he's shooting infinity or shooting he's leading the golf tournament he looks the same he goes about his business does his thing and like he's not a guy I want to get in, in the mix with a mix against because he just looks confident he never really hit horrible shots never really looked like he was out of control of his game sure a few bad swings happen but that's gonna happen but i just love how confident he looked but he surely has the game to contend on any golf course with that driving ability because not only is he long he was playing out of the fairway a lot or at least not infinity left or right except for that drive on 16 so i do think the eggs will be in contention more and like he 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 plays grid golf look remember how confident he looked in the practice round at the players like playing with ricky and another big name and he was like big dicking both of them just like strutting his stuff throwing his uh, <laughs> t- uh ball on the ground without a team just ripping through it <laughs> yeah. so i i like eggs yeah, that, that shot he hit on uh, the eighth Eight. hole, the players was, I think, the best shot that we saw the whole week. Just ripped like yeah. a four iron from like t- from like two. I don't even think we told the story. He like rips it from like two forty on eight, which is the toughest part three at Saga. There's probably forty people kind of milling about watching. I start clapping because I'm like that shot yeah. was fucking insane. I'm the only one. It's dead silent. No everyone was looking at Ricky. Yeah, like everyone's like waiting for Ricky about. to hit. And finally, you join in the clap, and then slowly people start clapping, and Yeggs kind of looks around like, yeah, like, give me some love. That shot was sick. So shout out to Yeggs. Yeah. Uh, I think we've seen it. I mean, he won so many times on the Corn Ferry. He's been steady now on the tour for a handful of years. The last couple of years, I mean, last year specifically, like, he was so great tee to green, but he was never finishing in the top 10. He was, like, stuck between right. top 10 and top, like, 30. This year, he gets a c- couple of top three finishes. Now he wins. I'm uh, optimistic about Yeggs going forward, and we'll see, like, where the prices fall. I think he's one of those guys where – uh, he's now going to be in the 20s and 30s in these week field events. Well, he was but, in the fall. Yeah, and that's where he was in the fall, and he kind of drifted a little bit, uh, obviously being in the 50, 60 range in Houston. But I think he's going to be one of those where he's going to be too low priced in some of these like weaker field events if he keeps playing those, but could be a compelling uh, you know, triple-digit price in some of these bigger events going forward, maybe high you know, 20 or high uh, double digits uh, in certain events. But shout-out to Stevie Yeggs absolute baller goes with the unbuttoned he's uh, now taken over for keith mitchell as the best golfer who goes with the deep v uh on the, the high polo. School, so. <laughs> well there you go I won't, but i'm i'm, I'm bumping yeggs i'm bumping yeggs to number one uh deep v look on on tour but toasty let's talk some alejandro toasty uh apparently i didn't I was see scared. it had some beef with big tone also brought a, a healthy amount of swagger to the course always does you had more eyes on like the holistic toasty experience i only got the last few holes where things looked a little uh wild there especially on 18 but what do you see from toasty and uh, what do you think about him going forward 319 yeah. average distance off the tee from toasty talk about confidence toasty is a confident man and i was so scared but i think it was the fact that I had bet him first round leader and he was like a staple DFS guy for me. I was like so high on Tosi. This is the best course we're seeing him in, in the PGA Tour career. And it panned out. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to bet him first round leader and he's going to win the golf tournament and I'm going to lose both. But it didn't pan out. So confident. So, and he played injured on, on Saturday, which could have just been like him, him making an excuse for like a few poor shots. But he was grabbing his shoulder after every pull drive. He said he was. A lot of his drives and iron shots were misleft because he was using his hands more than he uh, wanted to use his body. But the dude is so confident. And every t- and anytime you get a course that's long where you can drive it anywhere, Toasty can surely, surely contend. And he's a, like Dietrich, driver putter guy, but driver times infinity. He hits the ball so far. It's insane. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at it now. I mean, I knew he was long, but leads the field in distance. Like he's ahead of the next guys on the list behind Toasty and distance are Cam Champ. Wyndham Clark, Kevin Doherty, Chris Goddard up, Gary Woodland, Nikki oh, Dunn, like all bomber guys. And he's number one. Now, he also hits only 38% of the fairways in Houston, which is that's going to work in Houston. That's going to mm-hmm. work in a place like Mexico. That even might work in a place like Tory. If the rough gets so penal that no one can hit the Napa fairways, then next just, year. Yeah, just send it from the tee. So, uh, a guy to watch for sure, because when you're leading this type of field and driving distance, uh, you're doing that, the right things. Take note of that. Dietrich. To a T. To a T, a Tommy Dietrich performance. You literally could not drop a more Tommy Dietz performance right there, hitting great shots. Your, your claim is that when he starts birding the par fives, increases his BOB on the par fives, he's going to be winning. He looked good on the par fives. Just a few putts there at the end, a little low, a little weak, but he continues to play well. 
And those, I think he's cursed because he, I don't think you could have hit better putts on those three holes that he hit. They were rolling at the perfect speed right over the edge. And I've never seen Thomas Dietrich show so much emotion. He was like truthfully baffled by those three missed putts and he needed one of them to get into the playoff. And Dietrich, uh, an extreme talent, he's found himself in contention as much as anyone this season beside behind Scotty Scheffler. And yeah, just a, an incredible talent. I'm sad. I think he withdrew this week. Not that this was the best Dietrich course, but I, I, I want to see him play more because he's just a great golfer and I love him. He looked, yeah, he looked confident out there again. I didn't watch a ton of Saturday, but Sunday I watched a reasonable amount. And every time I flipped over and Dietrich was doing something, it looked good. Like his iron play, yeah. his shot into 18 even looked pretty good. Got it pin high, just mm -hmm. missed the putt. Uh, I thought Dietrich looked good. If he continues to get confident, he has to win. Like if Dietrich goes his whole career without winning on the PGA Tour, uh, that'd be a disgrace because yeah. he is too talented of a player. And in these weak fields, he he's right up there. And I think we got a random year of the week when he's in the hundreds. I mean, it's just, it's every time. Speaking of random year of the week. You nailed not, that. Yeah, we did. And Jaeger, not quite random year of the week, but uh, a year of winner. So we have to continue All the right. random year of the week segment because Europeans are just popping off this year on the PGA Tour. And he was on the drifters list, which you talk about a lot. Uh, I noticed last night, these guys that drift late in the odds, late in the week have been winning. Yeah, the drifters. Yeah, that is a 100% real thing. Ever since we kicked off golf.bensarex.com and we've got exciting stuff uh, coming there over the next month, there'll be more uh, to talk about on that front in the coming weeks. But yeah, the not popular guys, the guys drifting in the odds have won pretty much every week. Uh, I think right. every week, actually. And usually it's like a reasonable size drift. Like Jaeger had drifted like 30% from where he opened. Nobody wanted uh, was on Jaeger. And I think that's why it's interesting to look at how the odds are moving versus obviously you can go on Twitter and see who people are betting and seeing like who's popular or whatever. But at the end of the day, looking at purely what the books are saying by how the odds are moving, not a lot of it's action. Important. And, and yeah. uh, Jaeger gets the job done there. So I, will, I, I got off. We talked about it last week. You committed to the drifters outside of like Zal. I would say you kind of went top. Of, you went popular yep. with Zal. My card. I didn't intend it to be popular, but it ended up being popular. Like I didn't know who was popular when I was making the card. All those guys sucked. So I'm back on checking who's drifting, sticking to the guys uh, falling this week. Another random Euro. A guy who continues to pop up there. Just a quick shout out to Davy Skins. David Davy Skins. Skins. Like he was pissed because he, he like down the stretch. He like he wanted it bad. Skins. Yeah. He's been he was up there at uh, PGA Nash and now here. Diffy C's. When it's Diffy C's, we gotta have our eyes on skins. Yeah, I agree. Because he made the cut at TPC Potomac. Fun fact. Very <laughs> tough track. Uh Grazerman, he's one of the uh, up and coming uh KFT guys who I think actually looks pretty good. It was about time that he popped off. Uh Nikki Dunn. I brought up Nick Dunn last week. You did. Diffy C's no bomber courses. Like if the basically right. if, the pot, if distance of he's a driver putter guy. Nick Dunn, mm -hmm. driver putter. Yep. Yeah, you 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 nailed Nick Dunn. But I was I was definitely against you there, but that was a good call. Uh, strokes gained approach master last week. You were on him. He continues to pop off. He's going to be a, an elite player in the game of golf, in my opinion. Akshay Batia, good week for Akshay. Yeah, just get him in difficult conditions. There was oddly enough no water near the Houston area, and he still <laughs> almost fell top. If there was, he probably was winning that golf tournament. But great showing from Akshay. I was tracking him for the last three days of the tournament. Flagged everything like one of the best iron weeks i've seen from a golfer in a long time especially watching it visually just flagging every single shot he drives it so straight his irons are great like any course where the short game is going to be devalued a little bit because the like of hitting greens is going to be important uh we need to give browse on akshay famously uh hit basically every green at, at pebble when he was like 17 and he continues to flash the iron play amazing i mean he's still only 22 22 like, yeah He's, got He's in the, the field this week, I believe, right? Yeah. I think he was literally the only guy I missed in the write-ups. Now that I, I I remember that, I missed writing him up for some reason. But Akshay makes a ton of sense here. We'll get there. I mean, he's he's 12th in the model this week. He's been like top. I think he was around the, that same last week. Like he keeps going off. His, it, this week, his odds have, have like slingshotted up to 55 to 1 currently. He's in, like, usually in the 80s, which is when I'd want yeah. Akshay. But uh Every single week at big prices, if ball striking matters, eyes on all. Best, best approach week of his career was this past week at Memorial Park. He's good. Excellent. Good golf. Good golf. Uh, quickly, what's – I I don't have a take. I think it doesn't matter whatsoever. Any impact of Scotty's not winning the Houston Open, on your opinion, of him at the Masters? 
probably good for their career hierarchy. You don't want to win the Houston Open. You want to win the Masters if you're Scotty. But uh, no, I think it's so impressive that he did not have – like we always say that Scotty could win this B game, B minus game. He did not have that. He was hitting a lot of poor iron shots. And I guess he went OB twice on Friday. When did Scotty do that? Or Saturday, whenever that was. I think it was Friday. But yeah, he was still had a putt away from winning the golf tournament, and he was not even near his B game. So another excellent performance from the greatest golfer we've seen since Tiger Woods. Uh, so Scotty is more than live in the next few weeks. Uh, I will it. say the best golfer we've seen since Tiger Woods is Brooks Kepka, but we will see if Scotty over the rest of his career okay. can uh, surpass the, the Brooks Kepka uh, in my book, at least. But uh, another name, just two more names from Houston. One of them is a guy who sucks at golf, but maybe is trending in the right direction. Is Davis Riley moving from a terrible golfer up the ladder towards a bad golfer? Uh, no, I don't think we can say it after like one week of sample size. Truthfully, like I, the, I'm the out. only reason I bring him up is because the Tita Green was legit. And when he's played well before, he just gets on like these quick spurts of like T to yeah, green you're right. excellence. So I don't he likes Texas too. He likes Texas. Yeah. I it's I just have to shout him out for Devo. Uh, obviously, when you can hit it wherever you want, that's to his advantage too. But uh, he was just I had sorted by uh T to green here. And, and who the name I was looking for when I did this was Teagues. I didn't realize I'm actually mad now. I wish I didn't know this. Teagues was great ball striking this week. He was uh Sixth in the field, ball striking right up there with Scotty, Akshay, and Tone. Crazy. The short game just let Teagues down. I didn't know that. Which is very point. odd. That's an odd profile from Teagues. But uh, it's nice to see the ball striking continues for Teagues. I think every time he tees it up, uh, we got to keep our eyes on Teagues. Of course, we'll prefer that when he drifts into the 70 range. Like I think even at Augusta, these big tournaments coming up, if Teagues is in those high double-digit ranges, I'm probably going to have him on the card. Uh, kind of even... I don't even know if there's a course fit for him anymore because like no. he's, he's he's just hitting the ball so well that the 80s, 90s, 100s, 70s. I don't think it matters. The event he's anymore. becoming a popular pick at Augusta, which is concerning a little bit because he makes he makes sense for sure. But I don't want to bet him at 40 to one at Augusta. Oh, no, that That's would where be I'm seeing him. Uh, Teagues is 40 45. To one. I saw 45 yesterday. That is an awful bet. Horrible. And, and Teagues is one of my favorite players on the PGA Tour. Uh, that would be a massive mistake in my opinion, but that's the Texas children's open, uh, a good event. And it was enough where I genuinely thought there for a while. I wasn't going to be watching it at all. Uh, cause I was so Surprised into the, me too. I was so, so into the hoops. And then like you get that many guys in the mix and you get a golf course. And I think the PGA tour should lean into this. The most interesting events are these events where the scoring, it's not like uh, incredibly difficult. Like you can shoot eight under if you if you play great but these scoring conditions set up the best leaderboards they also allow the elite players to to elevate up the board but not this like not where it's so hard that only scotty can win because then you get right. like that's what bay hill is that's what like maybe even players is there's this middle ground where it's difficult but not impossible and those set up the best leaderboards and if i'm the tour every single week these are the kind of conditions that i would like to have yeah that was truthfully did not expect it to be like that. And quick shout out to 15, 16, 17. I think that's one of the most underrated three hole finishing stretches we see on the tour. That was unbelievable. We need a nickname for that. I think we, you and I should collaborate off camera and think of one and patent it. There you go. And I would say even 18, like it's not as interesting as 15, 16, 17, but we saw it. any hole where the leader goes to the final hole and they need par and you have to wonder if they can do it or not that's what happened to toasty he blew it off the planet to the right mm -hmm. got it up near the green but that green is insane like it yeah like, that is a tough green that, that is a tough green chip it like even guys from next to the green there was no guarantee you're going to chip it down inside five ten feet so uh, a good tournament and we continue the texas swing you took a shot at the state of texas uh I did. I, on twitter you said this is the worst swing of the year you said that early in Houston. Are you sticking by that as we move to the Texas Open? I think I mean it from like a visual standpoint. Like I watched like PJ Tour Live on Thursday morning. I'm like, these courses are so bland. But I think that's, uh, which I didn't really know, that is a not a hot take about Texas golf in general. It's just very boring, which I've never been to Texas. So I didn't really know that. But yeah, just very bland to the eye, which I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to lean into that. Yeah, and I will say, uh, my girlfriend's from Texas. She lives in Houston. Uh, she went to the University of Texas. I'd never spent much time in Texas until I met her, and now I've been to Texas a reasonable amount. 
what you're describing of the golf courses of Texas is true of the entire state of Texas. It is one of the most yep. bland, not exciting places that I've ever been. No offense to the people of Texas. A, a good culture, terrible visually. And that almost might describe the Texas golf because I think the courses actually are kind of cool in what they require from like a ball striking perspective, but to the eye, uh, miserable. So maybe there's some sort of metaphor there between how the state of Texas actually is and the golf courses. But Give me your keys for this event. I have it as one of the most ball striking heavy tournaments of the entire year. Uh, obviously a place that if Corey Connors can win two out of four years, right. he's notoriously the worst short game player in the game. Never practices a short game, never improves it. To me, it's just one of the biggest focuses on ball striking. But how do you think about uh, TBC San Antonio? Agreed. I'm going to lean more into iron play, I think, than you, which is the same idea. But I think there's multiple avenues to get it done off the tee. You can be a plotter and hit a lot of fairways and play from a little further back. And there is definitely an avenue to hit it further. As long as you're not in every bunker or off the planet, you can hit the ball far. But just overwhelmingly iron play, small greens, tough to hit greens here. So iron play is key this week for me. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and when I said ball striking, I definitely meant it in the sense of weighted towards approach versus off the tee. And I totally agree with you. And I, I even wrote about it this week where it's like, there's no evidence that distance or accuracy is necessarily better here. I want guys who gain strokes off the tee and I don't care if they do it because they're bombers or if they do it because right. they're accurate or there's some blend of the both. Just give me a guy who like, I don't want somebody who's losing strokes off the tee, you know, last 20, last 50 rounds or whatever, but I don't really care if they're a bomber or an approach. I think there's an interesting trend here and this trend is similar to one that existed at Valspar where like every guy who had won Valspar for an extended period of time had gained, I think it was like five putting or something like that within their like last four or five starts. So like guys who just spiked putting, Malnati ended up fitting that uh, description. But this one is wow, strokes gained approach in their previous start before Valera. So literally whatever the last event they played before Valera. Going back to at least 2015, and, and I stopped looking there, every single winner had gained at least three on approach in their previous start, like immediately the start before. So this isn't a course where you just roll up and like figure out your iron play. You got to be trending with your iron play here. And that limits wow. the field down to like, I think I there's like, I wrote them up. Uh, so if you want to see the list, go to vincerics.com. But there's like 30 guys who fit that bill. So I think it's just a place where like, you got to come in popping with the iron play. Uh, at least history uh, says that you do. I totally agree with you. And one, one of the guys that I will... Um, I'm leaning towards betting, or at least considering, is the opposite of that. He's a good iron player, but is not coming in in good iron form. But I'm probably going to have to take your word on that because, like I just said, iron play is so important. I want a guy who's coming in in really hot iron form. So that's a really, really interesting nugget. And I think Shout out golftopandsorics.com. And I think the angle there too, when I think about it a little bit more is that there's so many longer irons here and like shots from 175 to 200 that like, yeah, if you have a bad wedge week, you could show up the next week and have a good wedge week because like the margin for error is so slim. If you're having bad iron play, it's tough to get those long. Those, those are going to be the irons right. that like come around the, the take the longest to like figure out because they're the hardest clubs to hit. So uh, I think that could be part of it because there's even guys like the random winners here, Landry and, uh, Connors, the first time Connors won, and then Spawn, like big priced, huge priced winners. Spawn was trending. Yeah. You would think there's like nothing that ties you guys together. Landry, previous start, 2018, six on approach. Not a guy who gained six on approach, just like out of the fucking blue. Connors, plus 5.2 on approach. And that was before we even knew who Connors was. And he was the previous start. And then Spawn, plus 6.1. So it's like, if you're looking for a long shot, just look at the guys who gained a shit ton on approach last week or in their last start if they didn't play Houston. God. That's where I'm looking if I go uh, long shot season this week. But let's get to the top of the board. We have another marquee name. He's drifting big time. He's already drifted 30% from open. Rory McElroy. Ludwig now has almost caught Rory as favorite for this tournament. Uh, if I give you a matchup between Rory and Ludwig, let's just say for the kicks of this that they were the same odds. Uh, who are you going with this week? I probably would go with Ludwig just because I love that he's never played here before and just goes out and is going to go out and free ball it. And that is wrong. I just thought here before? I thought the same, Jers, because I wanted yeah, to fade. So, like, there's also no first time starter has won here in like perfect 2022. I see it, so, yeah. I was hoping that he didn't. So, I could easily just cross off Ludwig. Unfortunately, when I went and looked at his profile, he did play as an amateur. 
as an amateur. I do see that. And I was looking at the PGA Tour data. Okay, yeah. So that, wow, that kind of switches my nugget. But either way, I feel like Ludwig could just walk his way into a top 10 without even really trying just because he's just so good and he's just so young. He's like, I'm just going to play golf. Whereas Rory's has a million thoughts in his brain. He's like, okay, I got to work on this for next week. I got to do this to do this right at Augusta. I just think Ludwig has less thoughts, <laughs> simply. And the thing about Ludwig, a uh, short course specialist, even though he's one of the generational drivers of the golf ball, he only uses that skill when he plays short courses. We started this, we invented this take uh, a long time ago. Uh, Omega European Masters was when yeah. we first like, and then it's continued since then. Uh, he makes a ton of sense for that. I just can't, I don't think the price makes any sense. Like I, on a week like this, yeah, I'm, not gonna I'm good elsewhere. I actually think I would even lean Rory. Not because Rory matches any of the like keys that we just talked about, because he it's really does as well, though. Actually, he did. Yeah, his iron play yeah. bounced back, uh, so he would fit that trend. But he, Rory just winning the start right before the Masters is the most so Rory thing I could yep. ever admit. I was going to say that. I totally agree. Totally like, agree. I never single bullet guys from the top of the board, and I very, 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 very much won't probably do that this week no but you're, you're not doing that. it would not surprise me one bit if all of a sudden rory wins by like five shots and then he goes into the masters like his odds this drop instantly at the masters everybody gets fucking hyped like isn't that that's literally the most rory thing i can possibly imagine happening yeah he did that at the canadian open before was that the week before he was did that at the after? scottish open before the open when he was okay like, that's what it was he's done it before too i think uh like over this stretch of him not winning majors, he's definitely won it a couple of times, I think, the week before. So uh, that's my only Rory take. Let's get into the range of despair. The range of despair continues to be a place of disappointment. No one ever wins in the 20s, uh, except here at the Valero Texas Open. This is a course where the 20s seems to be a range that winners come from. Connors did it last year. I'm going to give you the range of despair, and you give me your favorite play in the range of despair. Spieth 20, Decky 20, Connors 22, Colin 22, Max 25, Fitz 28. I'm going to say Colin. I'm going to say Colin at 22. I know he doesn't fit that trend of coming in in hot iron form, but I have a take. I have a Colin take. He has not played any like small events. If you look at Colin's last six months, he's only played big dick events. The only two small dick events he's played, Zozo, and Rocket Mortgage, a win and a loss in the playoffs. So, I mean, you could say that he's hitting his irons bad. Yeah, he's not hitting his irons good at all, but he's a generational iron player. We're going at a course where we say you need to do that. His odds are a little bit – they're not drifting really, which I wish they would more, but I just feel like it's very on brand for Colin to come to a little event and put on a great Colin display with the irons. I'm going to go with that. That is an interesting take because I'll tell you, I had – before you started speaking about Colin Markawa, I had him hard off for me. But I agree with you. And I also think he has drifted a little bit. He's dropped uh, 22% so far. He's 22 to 1 now after opening in like the 18s on, on yeah. average. Okay. I think the thing with Colin is, I think the price is fair for the point that you just made. If he was, if this was trending Colin Morikawa playing his normal game on approach, he would be close to favorite of this tournament. In my right. opinion, he'd be like 12 to one, 14 to one. He'd be right up there just because of like irons. And, and so you get him to your point, having played no big dick offense since the only like tournament where I'd say it isn't exactly big dick anymore is Tory. And that was a disgraceful performance at Tory. Yeah, okay, that's fair, but it's still Tory. It's still like the farmers, and it's a not really a it's a massive golf course. So I would, yeah. I mean, look, it, looking at his profile, it's all big dick events. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I'd say I'd say broadly I agree, and I also think like looking at Colin's approach history, he, he never has bad approach multiple tournaments in a row. Like he I has think his he, last two were bad though. Yeah, his last two have been bad, but just like that's so out of line for him and i also think you get florida golf where like he might i don't even know if he hit shots in the water or not but like those are tough right. approach courses and colin i don't love those courses for colin in general this course makes all the sense if Corey I'm, connors is winning twice this course call it i like i've gone from <laughs> no, yeah you're so <laughs> i've gone from completely out to pretty in just from this conversation because like let's look at the other 20s spieth yeah spieth makes sense you got to give him a look what's your, what's your speed thought you're a speed guy what's your what's your thought there yeah, I he's driving the hell out of the ball. I just don't trust his irons like at all. He they've been 
I mean, his, they're volatile no matter what. Like we always say, speed's the number. I, I, I'm really eyeing speed for next week. So I want to just see how he hits it. But I would not be shocked if speed, speed comes out the gate hot. Like comes out the gates hot. His Masters odds suck. Though, for I know, but they're like, always going to be like that. They do suck. If if Spieth goes disqualified, T30, cut, cut, and let's <laughs> say he finishes like T40 this week and then wins the Masters, uh, oh my it, God, like twenty, so it, like twenty to one, I'll be okay if that. Like if that, <laughs> yeah, like right. I'm, if if I miss out on that, I'll. That's one of those where I'd be cheering for Spieth down the stretch as long as mm-hmm. I didn't have like a guy in the mix because that would be so unbelievable. Who like? Whose irons do you trust to bounce back more? Spieth at a place where his course fit is great or Colin just because Colin fucks on approach normally? Colin. Yeah. Colin. Oh, yeah. So Colin's my guy in this range. What about you? I was just, so I was just going to go through him because like I agree with Spieth where okay. I, I think I'm probably good. Decky's model number one this week. Decky has, if you talk about a guy who's been flushing the ball hot recently, Decky. And you like, saw my tweet this morning? I did see your tweet this morning and it, it, 20 to one on decky. Yeah. It's not a great price, but it's not a terrible price. He's won events yeah. at those low odds before. Like that's not, that's a Sony price on Decky when he won at Sony and he's playing better golf than that. in, in my opinion. Yeah. He won at Lester in, in Zozo, which is obviously a different story, but literally Hideki is a generational golfer. Everyone knows who Decky, even your neighbor who doesn't know about golf. Yeah. He's never statistically hit the ball better than he did in his last start. Never once ever. And you're and you're getting him at a golf course that makes sense. He's played here. I, he's played well he's played here. here. He's played well here. He's gained on the greens here too. Yeah, and I'm, I'm down. His around the green play is sick. Like between Spieth, Connors, Decky, and Colin, I think I lean Decky. Like the model supports that. I think the price is fair. Uh, he's he matches the just come in flushing it. Like my only question with all of these guys near the top of the board is like, do they give a shit about winning Valero or is this solely practice? Like. Decky might not give a shit and could still win just because Decky only knows how to flush it. And like when he's flushing it, it's, it's a robot. It doesn't matter to Decky. Yeah. Just... I, I always get Decky. I'm like one for eight getting Decky right in, in this range. I bet him before a ton in this range and I never get it right. He, it's like when the, one of those starts where he's fighting for the cut, but I, I could see it. The thing is you can bet both Hideki and Colin, but that, that strategy has not worked really once this whole year, but it's something yeah. we've yeah, been doing I'm... for years. I'm terrified of the, this range of despair. Like again, I would have been on Yikes last week if I wasn't didn't do anyone in the range of despair. You know, I would have bet three more guys, yeah. and I'm sure Yikes would have been one of them. So I need to avoid this range. But it is it's an enticing range this week just because of the course being so ball striking, like focused. That that's these why, are where the guys are. I wouldn't chase someone. So I think again, I've gone full circle. I think I'm probably out on Colin. I don't want to chase a guy who's not hot with his iron play in this range. But Decky uh, enticed me. Max, what do you think about Max? Because broken. He, is broken. We know Max is yeah. broken. It's he needs to play this event to figure something out before next week. I would say though, like he did hit his his iron play has been getting better every single week. It's his driving that's been really bad. Uh, he hasn't played well here before, but I would say Max is one of those. Again, your neighbor who doesn't get so into the weeds of golf that we do, maybe he bets on a tournament every now and then. He sees Max at twenty five to one and just bets Max at twenty five to one because like we don't see neighbor. Max at twenty five to one in these type of events. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I just really can't do the max thing right now because he, from watching a hundred golf, a million golf shots, we I could tell something's not right with Max at least in the last month. So yeah, I'm I got to be out, but I could see him coming out and playing well when I'm when after I say that. And then Fitz, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know of any lifelong. I don't think Fitz has, has camped near the course. I don't think Fitz is he's never played the course. I don't think his family has stayed at that hotel that's off to the side of the green there in San Antonio. Now. If a story comes out or if anybody who's listening to this pod has inside information that fits his family used to stay at the resort at this course, then he would, I would single bullet him this week, but I don't think right. I heard any of that. Yeah. And I have to, when I looked at Fitz's profile, he gained eight sh- strokes ball striking and seven strokes putting at the players. And fin- like, if you do that, like that, you should win a golf tournament. Eight ball striking and seven putting. That is insane. And he finished fifth. So, wow. Did, did you, yeah, like how, how did he not win that week? I was just a crazy profile from a fifth place finish. I thought was so impressive, but also yeah, I, I had not seen this. I actually forgot that he mixed it. I literally because like it was so Scotty's. Like that's how I remember players. I forgot he was even had his name up there. This stat yeah. profile is insane. If he did anything insane. around, insane. If he didn't just fuck himself around the greens, he would have. And it was all hole four. It was all hole four. What happened? The- oh, he he hit it in the water. That's right. 
No, he hit it in the water, and he when he was around the green, he chipped like like three yeah. days in a row. He made like no uh, better than double, and it was he just fucked up chipping and shit like that. But that, it was a crazy profile. I, I literally forgot he played, <laughs> like played well, and then I hadn't seen his profile. That's fucking. When crazy. I thought he, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, he probably just like putt really well, like just classic fits, and I was like, he gained eight ball striking and seven putting how did he not win well remember it's because he fixed his driver because yeah, he took that shit out of his driver so it's like if that's an if he if that literally like changes his game then 28 to one on fits like, like all these guys are you could make a compelling case that the prices are fair on most of these guys because Wait, he like won this week last year right fits didn't he win this week last year or was that two in, no he won week? he won rbc won the week after last year which was next week the week I think it he, he won after at RBC the week after the Masters, right? So I think, but I think that was April seventh, is what I'm saying. So it was, week. it was the week, it was uh, the sixteenth. So we we don't have same okay. week vibes here with Fitz, but uh, Wait, is that RBC again? Yeah, yeah. He'll <sighs> he'll probably he'll probably go back to back at RBC uh, <laughs> for sure. All right, there's a slew of interesting hypothetical three balls here in this next range of golfers. So we're just gonna rip some hypothetical three balls uh, because. First of all, I'm not even going to put Norn in a hypothetical three ball because I refuse to talk about Norn at 30 to one. That's fucking garbage. And I'll say that every single week. And if he wins at 30 to one, uh, you can clip this and say it was a bad take. I don't care. Uh, terrible bet. Uh, Tommy Fleetwood, Billy Ho, your boy, Russ Henley. Hypothetical three ball. I'm going to go with Fleetwood. I'm going to go with Tommy. Fleetwood there. Tommy, I, Tommy, I Tommy. cannot get behind a chalky... Billy Horschel, who fucks in Texas and fucked in Texas again, but he's finally catching eyes. He's going to be the most popular golfer this week. And Tommy has legitimately did zero things good in 2024, <laughs> has had a few weeks off. I just can't see him getting getting worse from Tommy. Do I think he's going to win? No. But do I think Tommy can ha- is due for a solid week? Sure. And the third one was who? Uh, your boy, Russ. Russ Henley, yeah, he's not hitting his irons well at all. He's been, been and that caught him at the players, and he was coming into the players in great form, but it was all with the putter. So, uh, Russ, um, yeah, I'm out on now, even though it makes sense for him. What's his odds? Like 35. I think he was 40. <laughs> now he's like 35. Uh, yeah. I, I'm would not. I'm not. I don't. I'm highly unlikely to bet any of these guys, and I'm definitely not going to chase the price on Billy Ho. But in a hypothetical three ball, I'm taking Billy Ho because he is just. He was so dialed yesterday. And actually for yeah. most of the week, like Billy is just dialed. He's in that zone where like when Billy gets in the zone and he's in Texas, we know the history there. Like, yeah, he was 70 to one last week. So 35 to one this week is insane. But yeah. he had, he probably missed in the final round, like six putts from 12 to 15 feet. And if he made two, he would have been in a playoff with the eggs. Like he came out of nowhere in that final round in difficult conditions and played really good. Billy's just kind of fucking right now. So uh, even though oh, holistically, is he a better golfer than Tommy Fleetwood or Russ Henley? Honestly, maybe <laughs> he wins more. Yeah. He wins as much as those guys do. So yeah, great uh, course history here too. Yeah, I think and he's finished fourth three times. Yeah, Texas. It, everybody Texas talks about too. Billy in Florida, but it's actually Texas where Billy uh, is legit. So yeah, I think I'll go Billy there. The next one, a guy we have to talk about. Ben on went on Twitter this morning. I forgot it was April Fool's Day. And he said he was quitting Twitter. And I then went to bet him because we've talked about it on this pod. When he quits Twitter, he will win on the PGA Tour. It turned out to be fake news. He even took shots at our guy, Jeff, uh, on Twitter. I thought he was going to quit. He doesn't. So he's he's number one, Ben on 35 to one. Harris English or Brian Harmon? I'm going to have to go with, I think, Harris English. Just playing so steady. Ben on has got two top sevens here, but he is coming off of the worst ball striking week since the 2021 Memorial, which is a long time ago. And that's definitely something. So something went wrong with Ben on because he's been hitting the ball so well. And then Brian Harmon, we, we uh, not, we, but people chase that 20 to one Brian Harmon at Valspar after legitimately six good rounds of golf in 2024. He's, he's playing downright bad before that two good rounds at what Bay Hill and then four good rounds at the players. And I never could have imagined he blew up at 20 to one in chalk. So therefore I'm going to go with the Harris English. Who's just steadying the ship and made the cut of the players, which we called. And he played good. Never played he, he, was, well. yeah. he was like on the fringes of the top 10 for most of the uh, event at a place. He'd played horrible his whole career. Uh, Harmon and, and Harris don't have great course history uh, in versus Ben on who does. I don't, I'd probably lean Harris. I don't think I love any of these guys. I mean, the best course fit. 
in general, how are you think like how important is course history to you this week? Um, I mean, there's a f- there's a handful of names that are absolutely like course horse sharks here they just play good here every year and it's the texas guys it's the speece the hoffmans the palmer palmers disclaimer if anyone on twitter touts charlie hoffman block them or delete, or just unfollow them <laughs> that's unserious because all oh, great course history uh yeah i mean you can it's, you can definitely win here without playing tremendously here but i just think it's like every week how are you coming in that week there's very few people that just no matter what their form just can play well at a golf course and the Total outlier is Brian Gay uh, in Bermuda. or <laughs> Where is it, Bermuda? Where he just plays good no matter what. But yeah, I don't think course history is that important. That that sequence of take that started with saying that uh, if anybody touts Charlie Hoffman, block them on Twitter to ending with talking about Brian Gay in Bermuda is my highlight of this entire time that we've been doing the pod because that was the most like random take i've ever heard but it totally made sense at the same time and was was fantastic so uh yeah wow <laughs> i didn't need a second to read that because i was like where is this going and then i was like damn this is a take and a half so uh moving on from that uh generational modeler adam scott no chance right finally lost strokes on approach for like the first time ever which is good for his career hierarchy not going to be in the model so good for adam scott yeah, he's down to 16th in the model. Uh, you're usually top five, so his his struggles are uh, reflected in the model. Tom Kim, uh, what's the deal with Tom Kim? Is he a uh, good number? Good course fit. How is he feeling? That's a that's a question mark that I think the odds answer, and I think the odds are telling us let's do it. You you've won it on Tom Kim. I never bet Tom Kim, but what is he around the 60s now? 50s? Uh, yeah, he is. And let me tell you something that might make you even more interested in Tom Kim. The top crossovers this week, uh, Vincerix.com. Sedgefield. And there's another one because Sedgefield, you would have thought of probably. Want to know what? So it's Harbor Town, PJ Nash, Sedgefield, and the next one after that, TPC Summerlin, where Tom Kim Fox. And he lives in Texas. And he lives in Texas. On the sea. And a guy who recently for a while now has been like the ball striking has been solid enough. And it's his putting that is kind of intermittent. Like sometimes he's, he goes on these hot streaks with the putter, but he also can get cold. Uh, that's not a concern for me at all this week. I don't care how good your putter is or not. So yeah, this feels a lot like when we talked about Stevie eggs last week. Right. right. And, and like, I don't think he'd be playing if he was object- like, he was sick. I don't think he would drew with any like legitimate injury. I, I could be wrong. I'm not sure what the players was, but I, I believe he. I uh, I, w- I actually saw it happen in real time. That was right before Ryan Fox hit his ace. Yes. Tom Kim rinsed it on uh, 17, and then I, I was like walking behind the bleachers, and next thing I knew, he was on. I saw him like shaking hands on the green. I was like, "This is weird." And then I f- opened my phone, and 10 minutes later, it said he had WD. So I think he was just rage. Like he probably wasn't feeling good. Rage rinsed it 17, rage mode. Uh, that wouldn't bother me at all on him. There's just a ton of guys in this like 60 to 100 range this week that are interesting who are some guys i'll just toss out some names but guys that like pop up to me uh aaron rye is playing great this is a great course uh fit for a guy like rye nikolai 66 to Dude. one on young nikolai mav mcneely cole denny glove van royan what's any of those guys Where, where's ekro uh, now that i just thought yeah ekro 90 uh yeah uh yeah i like ekro i like weird thing on mav mcneely why did he withdraw last week Two of his, two of his three best approach weeks of his career were in Houston, and I love the course fit for him outside of that. I didn't even know that. Then I looked; he stripes it in Houston, and I was like, "Fuck, why is he doing?" But Nugget, the fourth best approach week of his career is here. Maybe he yeah. just fucks in Texas. I was just about to say his numbers in Texas are good. He's also when when Mav was at his best uh, before he got injured, it was on shorter positional courses. It wasn't a surprise to yeah. see him uh, at Sawgrass. So Mav's interesting. What about uh, uh, give me your Nikolai take? Because this to me in this type of field, he played here last year, I do believe. Uh, what did Nikolai finish last year? T28 last year. He lost a lot off the tee. Uh, that's uncanny for Nikolai. Yeah, he hasn't been playing good at all. The worst strokes gained technically total performance of his p- short PJ Tour career, but he's just too good of a golfer. What was that? At, was that at Sawgrass? That that I'm yeah. Saying? I mean, he he played really bad at both Sawgrass and Bay Hill, but like fine, that's fine. 
Yeah, Fine. who cares? You know who else missed back-to-back cuts? Steven Yeager in Florida. That, All good. That's a great point. And that's something to keep in mind this week because those courses are so unique. This course is nothing like those courses when it comes to the penalty for wayward shots. You can right. lose so many... Like, Nikolai's not an accurate driver, but he's not a wild driver. Like, for how far right. he hits it, he usually gains off the tee. But you hit it in the water. You miss some greens hit it in the water. Uh, yeah, it's bounce back spot for Nikolai for me for sure. Uh, Eric Cole, it feels like his him. his price seems a little bit higher than where it normally has been in these types of fields. He's in like the 60, 70 to range. He's coming off a good iron play performance uh, at, where was it? At uh, Valspar. Yeah, that was the best iron week he's had since the Shriner. So he's been, that's a while back. Now he's had a, he's been dipping down, found it again. I do like Eric Cole, but you could finish up. What were you going to say? I was just going to add in that he was T39 here last year. So he's, he's got some reps. I think he was popular here last year too. So some, I, I, I'm down. I never you, Eric Cole. I like him. The model hates him. You wrote up terrible things about him. Uh, what it, does Ricky Fowler make the cut this week? I don't know. Like, what has he done? He what is, got he won at the rocket and like fuck this. I'm just gonna go. I, I've never seen a downfall so quick after he got good. It was insane. It makes so little sense because he was playing great, almost won the US Open, not really, but kind of. I uh, mean, yeah. I mean he like he legitimately no. he was like there. Uh then wins Rocket and he's been absolutely horrible since then. His course history here though is really good. Yeah, T seventeen, T seventeen, cut T ten. Like he has been playing a little bit better. Uh, at least the finishes, oh, but these are the I always that's kind of the annoying thing now with the uh signature events and then the, the cuts is like a lot of these guys have these made cut stretches, but it's like, did they really play that good? Right? The only outlier to that is Taylor Moore, just an absolute made cut machine. <laughs> Taylor Moore, we didn't mention him uh for what he did last week. Is he playing this week? I do not believe so. No, he's Could not. Uh, the other more though, Ryan Moore is playing. Keep your eyes on Ryan Moore. He's just continuing to, Palmer too. to uh, Texas uh, specials. Ryan Palmer, random euros of the week. And I'm actually going to add in international people to this. I, was, I, know, I know where you're going. You can we go need to talk about Rio. He Satsune, you wrote him up twice. Uh, you send over your write-ups <laughs> usually over the weekend. Uh, I was scrolling through them and I was like, I swear I saw Rio earlier. You wrote him up two different times, positively, both times that you wrote him up. I think that could be a sign. Uh, we know Rio. These, these are the scoring conditions. This is the type of course where I'd like Rio. Uh, random Euro of the week, random international of the week, Rio Hisatsune. Yeah, I'm not sure how I managed to write it up twice, but I said similar things both times. He's not the a generational driver, but he can definitely spike with those mid irons, and he's a great around the green putter if uh, he needs to. Can definitely fall after the putter. He's showed good things over the last few weeks. I'm, I, I can get, I can buy some Rio for sure. Yeah, what is number? 110. That seems fair on Rio. I think that was Rio. Good. Yeah, Rio and triple digits uh, is is good for me outside of like a, a major or something like that, which I don't even know if he's going to be in any of those. Uh, Vic Perez did play well last week, right? Reasonably uh, well from from yeah, Perez. Yeah, being... he's 17, I believe. Yeah, after his chalk the week before. Uh, I like Perez in Texas still. I think Texas, like he was right up there at the uh, match play that one year. Uh, Vic oh Perez. God, yeah. We talked ri- rise incredibly high in the model. Uh, Rye's actually putted well here before. That's what's interesting about Rye is that like we know what Rye is. He's great tee to green. Uh, he has putted well here before. Do you like Rye? Yeah, just a model of consistency. Like I see it T15 to T35. He just He's just going to hover in that range. I mean, he showed that upside last week where he was close to being in contention, was in contention. Uh, not that I want to chase Aaron Rye being in contention. What are his odds? Um, 60s. No. Great yeah. DFS play though. Yeah. He's just been putting better. Like his his yeah. putting he was putting so bad there for a while. It's turning in the right direction. He's putted well here before. I expect Aaron Rye to be in the mix. I also think he might be popular. And if he's in the 60s, uh, that's not a price where a popular Rye would make sense. To me, Seamus Power. He was random Euro of the week a couple of weeks ago. Uh he's been trending. This would be a Seamus course if he was in form uh back in the day when he was good. How do you He's now you? gained on approach in three straight starts, and when Sheamus when Sheamus shows it, he shows it, and he is showing it. Obviously, the rest of his game might not be all the way there, but he's trending and doing his best part good right now. So, what are his odds? Hundreds? Uh, one thirty. I'm uh, not that I think Sheamus is going to win, but those are good odds. I would say those are good odds for sure. 
He's doing uh, he's getting his irons really well. Thor has finally drifted. He's 150 with Fox. Finally. Uh, do you, would you and so here of these Euros, all around 150 plus uh, internationals. Who do you want? Thor, SH, Ryan Fox, Maddie Schmid, Martin Laird, Kevin Yu, Toasty, or Svensson? Svensson. I yep. want Svensson. Is this like, I'm actually wondering if this price is even right on Svensson. Because Svensson has the last few weeks, two weeks, he's been in the mix late on Friday afternoon and then just completely has exploded. Why is, is that right? Why is so you could get a 200 to one on Svenny? Let's bet that that doesn't make any like short positional course. His iron play has been good the last two weeks. He's only he's been putting really, really bad. But yeah, Svenny can like Svenny can win this type of event an iron play, like stripe show type of event. 200 what on happened Svenny. the last time you and I both bet Adam Svensson? He won at long odds at the RSM Classic. That is a fact. I didn't know those were his odds because I liked him early in the week. That no, I, I found something. It was so surprising to me that I had to go look him up to make. I thought something was wrong with the site. I was like, we need to update the site. Something's wrong. And then I actually looked and I was able to find even longer odds. Two hundred to what on Svensson? Insane. Yeah, he's been. He was near the first round lead at the Valspar. He was up in there Friday afternoon, and then he rinsed the ball on fifteen or fair look at up and down on Friday afternoon yeah. at at Houston. Yeah, he's been playing just incredibly like volatile. Like he's having a great round and then a bad round and then a great round and a bad yeah. round. Yeah, two hundred to one. I mean, he was t ten at Jenny. That's an elevated event. He just like was up there. There, we know he can win. And this is a Svenny course. Like we just listed off the crossovers. He's been great at PGA National's career. He's been great at Wyndham. Uh, yeah, Svenny. Sony Wiley. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. Svenny. Uh, it, uh, random Europe of the week adam svensson but he's actually canadian so uh <laughs> but, Connors. but it's canada if there was a non-european country that was somewhat european uh, it'd be canada so i could see it was Svensson. and to your point strokes in canada here is a real thing uh we've seen the success of Corey connors if svensson wins at 200 one and you don't bet him you would it, it would really feel like one of the dumbest things that's ever happened yeah i think we're i think we got to do that adam i think we do all right, we'll we'll discuss that here uh, momentarily, but we'll probably be on Svensson. Any other random long shots of the week that you've got your eyes on? P- over a hundred to one, just guys. I, I to me, it's the guys that if they go go to vincerx uh, and see the list of guys who were spiking on approach last event, because like I said, when it has been long shots, it's been those type of guys. So let me let me open up that list and drop a few. Yeah, I think it was was Svensson and Power who were the, were the guys that I liked. Um, so yeah, I think you you said them. Here's a few guys who, who popped on approach recently or in their last start. Former champion, JJ Spawn. Do you like JJ? No. Sammy Rides? Yes. But he, he has good results here, but it was all with the putter. Bud Colley. Bud Colley has good results here in his Bud, past. I, I think Bud's going to have a nice week. What are, what are Bud's? I'm, Bud's a BSB. Bud can hit the ball. Wow, he's only a hundred to one. I thought it was gonna be way more than that. Yeah, those are bad odds, but he has he's finished inside the top 20 twice here. Really? No, yeah. yeah, I'm down. All right, Bud Collie, keep your eyes out for uh, Bud. Damn, he's just been hitting it so nice and his best putting is so bad. But PJ Nash comp, uh, Bud Collie, so I like that. Uh, we've got one other event this week on the live tour. I haven't dug in too deep, uh, on live yet. They're playing Dural, I do believe. Home game. Home game for like half the, the players on live. You got any early leans? Uh, from yeah, I, I wrote it up last week. I'm I'm either with, I think I'm going to do Bryson or Taylor Gooch. Also, I know I'm not even going to say this. Bryson or Taylor Gooch, I think I'm going to get there. I just like the Taylor Gooch narrative. Like, What's the Taylor uh, Gooch? I mean, I, mean I, I think I get it, but what, what's the narrative for Gooch? Like the narrative of him winning like the week before the Masters and him still not getting an invite to the Masters and just him like boasting that on Twitter for like the next year. I mean, he hasn't won this year. He's still playing really good. It's a course where distance matters for sure, but you have to keep the ball in play, which I mean, Bryson, Bryson could definitely hit the ball in play if he needs to. He's playing really good golf. He's hitting, he's putting really well. And it's a course where you could shoot 62 or shoot 78. So I think it's going to be a fun, a fun, a fun event. Who were the winners when Doral was a tour event? What was that event called? 
Uh, I forget, but Patrick Reed, Dustin Johnson, and Phil. Oh, I think it's those three. I got it. Wait, this is not the right event. This is the Doral Open. Uh, Doral. We uh, we look like we don't know ball. We don't know the event that was at uh, Doral back in the day. That's no, it event. was um, uh, the WGC Cadillac. Ah, uh, yes, that's exactly what it was. Good call. The WGC Cadillac winners at the WGC Cadillac were uh, the, the one year, the one year it wasn't at this course. Remember when Colin won at Concession, took down uh, yep. Billy Ho, but uh, and then it was in Mexico. Okay, back in Florida, Adam Scott, Dustin Johnson. But so it was Adam Scott, Bubba Watson was second. Then it was Dustin Johnson, JB Holmes was second. Bubba's played great here. Yeah, the bomber. Bomber Central for sure, but I mean, yeah, this maybe maybe Bubba Bubba's played great here in his career, and he actually played, what event did he mix? Was that Vegas? Yeah, was I was it? in Vegas, which is a t- totally different course. But this is this is weird because in that winners when this was the WGC WGC Cadillac, four under one and nineteen under one. So it's like I think it's just entirely weather reliant, and yeah, the wind. I think we're looking good. I think we're looking good for the for the weekend. So I'll probably be down yeah. there on Friday. Oh, you're gonna go. I, I think I want to go one time. Yeah, I, I've never been, so I want to go to a Friday one. I feel like you'll be able to see so well too. There's going to be so no well. people there, so like you're going to get front row for like a for a diehard golf fan going to a, even like going to live sounds fun. You get to see like yeah. sit there and watch guys hit shots, and I think obviously all the guys will be focused, taking it seriously. Like this week, right. wanted to get prepped for the Masters. That's why you obviously got to always keep your eye on Brooks. Like he didn't he win last year, the week before the Masters. Uh, he will be focused. Home game for Brooks as well. What's your general narrative, both on Liv and the Tour this week, on whether guys want to win, or if they're just there to prep, and are you factoring that in any way to your handicap? I mean, yeah, I am factoring it in, but like, look, there's never going to be a golfer who tees it up an event and is like, I'm, I'm not trying to win the event. That's n- will except, never ever be the case. Except for Brooks in like half the Brooks. on the PGA Tour. Ex- except for Brooks Kepka, that is the only <laughs> exception. But like, even on the guys on the PGA Tour, like, I do think Rory is there to work out some kinks. Like, majority of golfers like that. But I do think everyone is going to be teeing it up and trying to win. That's kind of makes me nervous betting the top of this range, but. It's a t- it's a tough handicap that you can only you can't ever quantify. You just got to pick a tr- pick a lane and run with it. So I'm gonna go with everyone who's playing wants to win. All right, that's fair. Uh, on that front of I, we have to talk about this because I already made the uh, graphic, the thumbnail for the pod, and I said, is it a long shot or favorites week? And you just brought it up there, kicked it back into my mind. At this moment, and I know you will probably adjust this, and we'll be in the Discord, and obviously on Vincerix.com, you'll see. Uh, where we end up but are you going long shot card do you think i mean obviously somebody the f- below 50 to ones are more likely to win than the above 50 to ones but do you think long shot season continues here we get let's call it 80 to one or above or do you think this falls back into the range of despair middle ground favorite doesn't this doesn't this feel like too obvious of a long shot season event like we just got scotty winning and like we're at a course where a bunch of long shots can surely mix why not the despair just just a winner from the despair. I could see that for sure. I'd say this is one of the first weeks in a long time where I think the twenties range is like attractive. I think the like range that uh, Stevie eggs won from, cause they're like, I would say nap at Mexico and Stevie eggs in Houston were from the same general range, just beyond the range of despair. But before the long shots is what those are the that. only two. I think so, right? Because it's been long yeah. shots, Scotty, and then those two in the forty to let's call it sixty to like yeah, eighty range. Right. We need a name for we need to come up with a name off air on that as well because we've got favorites, range of despair, whatever that like no no man's land. That's what it is. No man's land. Yeah, yeah. So there's no man. I don't like the no man's land range this week, except for we talked Tom Kim. I kind of like that. Uh, but then yeah, just find the guys who've been hot on approach. One of there is going to be at least two absolute randos in my opinion seriously in the mix that would be my take for this week yeah no it's not a, that's a good that's a good take i agree and that would be a pretty compelling event a bunch of rant or a handful of randos and then a handful of big names down the stretch the week before the masters like to me that would be the best case scenario for this event it's kind of what we saw last week at the, at the houston yeah I th- we need a cup like do you think scotty scotty versus like the field like it was last week 
and no one cheered for Scott or no one cheered for Jaeger when he won. When Scotty missed, it was just dead silence. Oh, that would have been like, so like that's what it, that's what it was. Like that literally, like no one was cheering for no, Jaeger after like Scotty missed. Do you think that type of event is compelling for random golf fan who's not like diehard? Do you think people were interested in that? I from what I saw like on social media, people were not tuned in to the or they were bored with the golf is what i saw but i don't know how you could have been bored it could have just been stupid live people talking about that but it was so good you didn't have you besides billy you were still interested in what was going on right yeah i mean i would say the back nine i was interested like i was waiting to kind of see if to see how it filtered out and see if scotty would like pull away but once i saw he wasn't pulling away then i was interested and i feel like that's probably how most people felt you know if, if scotty had just run away i probably wouldn't watch that much maybe i would watch him like tap in you know on 18 or something like that but it right. really seems especially in texas like the entire crowd was for scotty they were really pulling for him and i think that's like should be. it'll be like that with jordan if he's there jordan this week probably the most supported guy right right yeah yeah strokes gained texas former tpc like at&t strokes gained at&t speed's got that going okay. from this week but right. uh yeah an exciting week before the masters it's nice to see a competitive field here it's, it's definitely the best field that i can think of uh at the valero since i've been like digging into this type of stuff i did tweet out quickly your thoughts on the only two guys who are not making any starts now between the players and uh the masters there's three guys actually i just found another one but hovland and cantlay are the big names and then chris kirk for some reason chris kirk not teamed up here famously uh, a great course fit at the valero texas open but what like I don't I could maybe get it for Pat because Pat can just show up and like robot golf, but I don't like it for either of them not playing. I understand it for Vic 100% because he's clearly needs work off the golf course. Clearly. And he <laughs> like we like you said, the priority is his swing because he knows how to get it done at Sawgrass, which he didn't, but he he's played there. He knows how to get it done at Augusta. So he needs to dial in whatever he needs to dial in. So I see it honestly more for I mean, pro- probably both of them because Pat's been off with the ball striking too. So I think it makes sense why they're doing so. Chris Kirk, like word, he's just a, a vibey guy. Like let him have his thing. He's probably, he's probably playing lefty. He's probably at Augusta playing lefty. He's just like chilling. He's he's from Georgia. Yeah. Like he's like, I'll just be at the Masters. I'll catch you later. Like already, yeah. there's he's already accomplished more this season than Chris Kirk could ever imagine. He, winning Century, like his years, it's absolute chilling now. I, I think he could mix actually in some of the majors because if that's all he cares about, Chris Kirk uh, can fuck. So. Watch out for Chris next week off of the uh, sneaking in off the players, not playing at all. Jers, Matt, appreciate it. Congrats on the Jaeger hit. Let's hit another one this week. Oh. Let's get ready for the Masters. The next time we'll be talking is the Masters. Augusta National, oh, yeah. folks, get excited. Uh, Masters next week. We will see you then. Best of luck, everybody. Peace.